to another models by me. This time we'll be unboxing a golden oldie, the Airfix 170 second scale Westland Whirlwind. We will be doing this in the usual manner of starting with the outside of the box, then the contents, then the instructions, and then the sprues, with my final thoughts at the end. So a little bit of history on the whirlwind. In 1935, the RAF issued a specification asking for a single seat day or night fighter. But unlike the other aircraft the RAF had at the time, being equipped with only four VF3 caliber machine guns, this was to be equipped with four 20mm cannons, which would have made it the most heaviest armed aircraft of its time. Westland entered the competition with their fighter and won. This was against seven, ever, seven other aircraft. Um, this also included redesigns of both the Hawker Hurricane and Spitfire. The prototype proved very promising, capable of, capable of high level flight with good ground strafing abilities, all within a highly manoeuvrable fighter which was one of the first to feature a bubble canopy. So what went wrong with this promising fighter? Why does it not hold the same fame as the Spitfire or Hurricane, despite being designed around the same time? Anyone that knows the whirlwind will know the issue is with the engine, the Rolls Royce Peregrines. Being the only fighter to actually be equipped with this engine, it seemed like likely that, yep, you can trace it back to this engine being the problem. However, research done by the Whirlwind Fighter Project found there was many more issues which led to the fall of the Whirlwind. Between production and prototype, the propellers were actually changed from a Rotol design to a de Havilland design. This created problems when the de Havilland propellers creating small sonic booms, which the Peregrine engines just couldn't handle. Another issue was with the radiators. Trying to cool the Peregrine engines was four circular radiators in the ring, ring routes. These were not efficient and with some odd design quirks with the flaps, meant that for landing or takeoff, the pilots had to keep a careful balance between the engine temperature and the speed to keep it from stalling. Another issue was with the engine, but not with the Peregrine, but actually the famous Merlin engine. This had some major issues that need to be sorted out, and quickly as it has been equipped to nearly every other air RVF aircraft which meant that all hands were required to fix the Merlin and less time was spent on the Peregrines. Alas, timing was also not on the whirlwind side. Production started in 1940. With World War II now in full swing, the RVF prioritised getting as many aircraft as possible ready for the invasion of Britain. As the whirlwind required more resources than the Spitfire, which was already more than the Hurricane, meant that production was slow. With the Rolls Royce prioritising manufacturing the Merlin, the Peregrines didn't get developed as quickly as they could have, which meant the first whirlwinds entered service in December 1940. Once in the air, the pilots did actually enjoy this fighter. But as the aircraft couldn't fly above 20,000 feet, the whirlwind was relegated to a ground attack role. Being equipped with bombs, earning the nickname Whirly Bomber, it was a role that it was actually really good at. If the whirlwind was pounced on by a dedicated single seat fighter like the 109, it could actually hold its own against them. Unlike, the Ger unlike Germany's heavy fighter, the BF 110, which struggled against the Spitfire Hurricane. Alas, with better designed aircraft like the Typhoon entering service, 
which was also later equipped with four 20mm cannons, and the bow fighter, which proved extremely useful and was even more heavily armed than the whirlwind. This led to the whirlwind actually being retired from service in 1943. So that's a shame for an aircraft as unique as the whirlwind was, it unfortunately suffered badly from bad timing. Surely if the time and resources were spent into sorting out the radiators, engines, swapping the propellers back to the Voltal props, this would have proved to be an extremely deadly fighter. So let's continue, thank you for listening to that, let's continue with this unboxing video. If you made it this far, please hit that subscribe and like button as it does help. So then, let's start with the outside of the box. So, brand new kit for whenever this was released. So we've got Airfix, Whirlwind, 72nd, and nice artwork of a couple of Whirlwinds actually in action. Don't ask me what the 266 sticker is, I have no idea. Right, let's have a look at the side. So we have, oh, there you go. 1977, suitable for years eight and above. Uh, paints include, oh, this is the old style. This is the old style Humbros, where it's M, M2, M6. Yeah, good luck. Also, if you have any of these paints lying around, A, congrats, you've still got some of the oldies. And B, how you still not used them up after all these years? So you got instruction, uh, English instructions included, instructions in French and German. Down the side here, you've got 266 splattered across the front again. Otherwise, it'll tell you 172nd Whirlwind Series 2. Uh, Airfix and the fighter again. This side, we have markings provided for Mark 1 of 137 Squadron. Presented by Mr. and Mrs. Ellis of Fiji in June 1942. And this side again with again with that sticker. The underside of the box is a box. Now, what kind of unboxing video would be without unboxing it? So let's do an, let's have a look at the contents. So we have the instructions. Are you a member of the Airfix Modelers Club? That is still going. It's somewhere in the instructions hiding it. There it is. Here's your decals, which have not aged that well. Have a look at the instructions. Oh, yeah, the bit of tissue paper that comes over the decals. The bubble wrap is not a feature of this kit. It was it, this was an eBay job. This one, so the seller kindly put bubble wrap around it. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six sprues. Seven, you have the canopy. Also, these early ones, it comes with a flying stand. I've not seen one of these for, well, since I last made something that was about this old. There's so many manager around in it. Where are you? Loose piece of something. Oh dear you. Oh yep, there you are. Okay, this kit is damaged. You're supposed to be hiding there. Somebody might have lopped you off by mistake. Ooh, that's a shame. Okay, I'll put you back in there to keep you safe. Yeah, 
Instructions. So let's have a look. How was these old instructions done? So we have some blurry writing. There we go. Performance, 354 miles per hour, just shy of 1600. Service ceiling, 30,000. It says 30,000 there, and yet when I was looking this one up, it said 20,000. Okay. And then general instructions. It's recommended that exploded views are studied. We're going to explode the view. And assembly practice before cementing together, aka dry fitting. Okay, read the rest of that later. And if you want to read the French and German versions, you can pause that. Right, so let's finish unfolding this bit of paper. This feels like really old paper. Also, it, best way I can describe it, it's like newspaper. This paper feels like newspaper. That's weird. Okay, so along the top, cement, transparent, so there you go. Do not cement for spinny propellers. Assembly selection, which there, uh, alternative parts. This cow has alternate parts in it. Hmm, interesting. Start off with pilot into cockpit section and then a little bit on top. Oops, stage one, stage two. Also love how these ones also tell you the part numbers you need. Next, put the cockpit section onto the pegs. The You can just make out the instrument panel hiding there. And then put the nose cone on top of the onto the front of the fuselage after you glue the two sides together. Stage three, do that to that to that. Ah, that's nice and easy. Stage four. Right, do not glue a spinny propeller into engine A cells. Alternatively, if you do not care for spinny propeller. Glue that into there, glue the two wings together, stick it in the side. And the same with this side. Glue you into there, glue you two together, and stick them in the side. Up to you if you want to glue the aerial and canopy on. I tend to leave these to the last, so I don't paint over you, and I don't knock you off later. Also, I just thought, something we haven't done for a while, this guy has a pilot. There's a pilot in here. We can do the jelly baby test. I've not done one of those for ages. And the so-called optional parts. So you can have landing gear up or down. If you're having landing gear down, you've got to cut the um, doors open. Landing bay covers open. And then glue... We've got the wheel there. Glue these two together on either side of the wheel and locate on the inside of the wing which I'll bring out a wing now so the landing gear slots into these Ooh. Nineteen seventy eight is on is hiding in the wing there. And now you focus on the date. Silly camera. So yeah, if you want landing gear down, cut these open, glue all the landing gear in. If you want landing gear up, ignore the wheels and struts, just glue the covers straight over. And then also glue the horizontal stabilizers on. Stage six. The thing that made this as unique as it was. Glue the four 20mm cannons in the front. And that's it. That's one fully assembled wrestling whirlwind. Now, what's on the other side of this bit of newspaper? Decals! Which is an um, interesting way of doing it. I suppose on the plus side you can actually make out and see what the 
decals are and which ones you're supposed to put in. Doesn't quite help with painting. Okay, you can obviously guess so that goes to there and then just loops straight down into there. I think that's you there, so it just <laughs> Even so the one on the underside of the wing there. <laughs> that's the first time I think I've ever seen one where they actually show that bit. I could be wrong. Top half of the camouflage and the lower half. And like most of these old kits, each one of these has a pattern. So stripes, dots, or dots further spread apart. And in relation to the colours here, which is for this one apparently, is olive drab, slate grey, and light art aircraft grey. Which I think nowadays it's medium sea grey, dark green. I don't think that one's still light aircraft grey. And it tells you the colours is M13, M2, which is 106 nowadays, and M21, which is, if it's olive drab, is 155, or nowadays, being dark green, is Hambro 30. Tells you which um, markings this for again. To apply transfers or decals, separate, separate into required subjects. Okay, cut out the pieces you need. Dip in warm water for a few seconds and slide off. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much accurate. M16 Vellum? Huh, I wonder what Vellum is. But that's it for the instructions. There we go, the seven sprues back out again. Even most Airfix kits nowadays don't have seven sprues, but as you can see, each wing is its own separate sprue. So, I suppose it made the spares part department easier. So you just say, oh, I need a new wing. Okay, here you go. They're kind of doomed. It's just a... This one's poorly. Right, let's have a look at the wings and see what detail are there. So I'm talking about wings, let's start with them. So the underside. We have very limited but raised panel lines. Very limited. We have recessed ailerons. Okay, that's nice. Other than that, it is really smooth. The exhaust is, oh. The exhaust is solid plastic. Great. That's fine. We'll have to have a look at the other wing, but it's probably going to be the exact same. No survey says. Yep, exactly the same. The upper side of the wing. Again, there's, there's just barely any detail in there. You see, the detail for the interior of the landing bay is yeah, non-existent. At least the ejector pin marks are out of the way. Nope, not too bad. Right, let's have a look at the fuselage next. So... Recessed for the rudder there, that's nice. And again, very shallow raised panel lines. Hold to stick the aerial in there too. Part of the radiator side in there. I said the wheels don't look too bad and uh, one piece. Interior detail and non-existent, which is what I would expect from a kit this old, to be honest. Okie dokie, and the last one, horizontal stabilizers, uh, same, 
Propeller is propeller -y. I'll come back to the Jelly Baby in a minute. Cockpit detail here is... Eh, it's alright. The cannons are pretty basic. Wheels quite nice, and I understand the detail. So I appreciate the, the detail here as well. You've got the recoil springs, you can just about make them out. That's the uh, landing bit, landing gear doors for the tail wheel there. Back, back pieces for the propellers. Landing gear struts are... Well, that's one way of doing them. Right, let's do the J-Baby test. How much of a jelly baby are you not? Ooh. So, what I refer to as a jelly baby um, is basically, is the detail nice and crisp or is it all like smoothed over, bubbly, bold? But... The pilot isn't that bad, actually. He's quite nicely detailed. Got, you can make out the fingers hiding there. He has a face. He has goggles. He's got a life jacket. He's got a coat. He's got... I will say gloves, but he can't quite make out the gloves. He's got his mask hanging down there. He's definitely wearing boots. And I think even the detail was on the back here, which... Definitely not going to see if you put them up against the seat. Yeah, you've got detail on the back. Okay. He passes. He is not a jelly baby. So. Okie dokie. That's, that's it for the sprues. So, let me box all this back up again. And final thoughts. <laughs> So, my final thoughts on AFX's Whirlwind from 1978. It's a product of its age. That's evident when you look at the detail or lack of. There's just... What is there is very basic. But it does make, give you a chance to build a quite unique fighter. Or fighter bomber, evidently, as it turned out to be. So, I think this is best summed up, as always, with my scores. So, skill level. One being beginner. Two being easy. Such as, a, like, an airfix Spitfire. Again, 70 second skill. Three being intermediate, so I would say like the bombers. Quite got you need some knowledge on how to put the kits together and be able to like plan ahead, but not as much as like a skill level four or even five, which would be advanced and expert respectively. This is a two. This is skill level two. This is an easy kit to put together. There is, okay, might need a bit of help, like, cutting the landing bay doors open and putting the landing gear in. But if you don't want the landing gear down, then this is a very easy two. So, quite a simple kit to put together. Interior detail. Now this is a 1 to 5, so 1 would be it's non-existent, 5 being crisp, nice, all the details there, It's you can see the dials, you can see the needles, got levers, you put the levers in, you can almost like fly it straight out of the box if you could. We're back again to what detail? There is limited detail in there, so you've got a representation of the instrument panel, the seat's Okay, and the bits that hide up here, 
that's actually quite nice. But that's literally all that's going for it. Ignoring the uh, pilot, because the pilot's actually really nice. But uh, the control column isn't there. The throttles isn't there. The flap levers are not there. So, I can't give it a three. I'm going to have to give this a two. It's very basic what is there. But there's definitely more in there than just the seat. Exterior detail. What exterior detail? This is again done one to five, so one is literally slab sides, nothing there whatsoever. All the way up to detail five, which is you've got the panel lines, you've got the rivets, you've got like the screws, it's really nice, really crisp detail. Does this have rivet lines? No. Has it got panel lines? Some, yeah, that are raised. Have we got the flaps and ailerons? Yes, we do. They are actually just marked out. The radiator? No. The wings do have the slots, but there was nothing on the interior there. It's just a slot in the wing. Are the exhaust stacks... Um, Okay, these are covers. Did they have holes for the actual exhaust to come out of? No, no, they did not. It's not a slap sided thing with no detail. There is some detail there, and you can put the detail, more detail onto it if you so wish. But I'm going to have to give this a two again. So, total score, skill level two. And detail of four. But I will give this this caveat. It is a product of its age. It's a late 70s kit. There's not... Some of these kits we've looked at, it's been quite mixed. Some of them have been like really nicely detailed. But others, not so much. So I'm looking at like the... Like the bombers, which say so the Halifax that we've looked at, the Dornier 17, the early one. Both of those have interior details, but they're both bombers, so they I think Airfix are expecting you to take your time and build in these building them. The whirlwind is a fighter, you can do it, we can make paint make paint and decal it all within a day. Which is um it's fine, it's... Again, it's a product of its age. If Airfix ever redo this kit, I would... Or redo, retool it with all the like new details that they put onto it. Oh, Airfix, please do that. It would be lovely. And it would be nice to actually see a 70-second scale whirlwind again. I'm aware there was a 30-second scale by Special Hobby, which looks... Oh, that, that looks pristine. That looks really good. But alas, 30 second skills are not really stuff I would collect. And I say that and I've got two 30 second skills now in my collection. Anyway, if you like the video, please hit that like button. Share the video with your friends, get, get it out there. I say if I do hit the 500 subscribers, I will do the build video on the, there he is, the HE177. And yeah, subscribe for more videos. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, bye.